Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, bud. What's up, gang? What's up, Welcome gang? to the broadcast. Simon, Simon, Simon Arias here. here. Get, Get ready. It's a new day. New day. What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. And I got my man, Kevin Rader, in the house. Did I pronounce that the right way? That's right. Kevin yep. Rader. Uh, so I got I got my friend here, and um, he was one of the stars on the Youngstown State Penguins football team, the first to go back to a national championship a few years ago since Coach Jim Trussell was there uh, to do it multiple times. So it was exciting to me um you know i, I could remember um before i met you in person um i was i was on the beach in florida when i when i kind of met you for the first time because i was jumping up and down in treasure island florida uh on my couch with my wife um because i was watching the the semifinal game uh where you where you caught that touchdown pass mm. to to put us in the national championship game and uh and I was going nuts and then I come to find out you know I realized that you're the same person that was from this area and I bumped into you at the Oxford club before at the at the gym and so we just kept bumping into each other then I I said you know what you inspired me so much after that. My mom went to Youngstown State. I said, we're getting on a plane and we're going to Dallas, man. We, we, we got we to gotta go see this in person. Then I saw you after the game, you know, uh, again. And then life would have it and you come all the way back full circle. And now you're here with the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and, and playing in Pittsburgh. And we had a chance to, to link up recently as well. So I just wanted to expose uh, some of the listeners on here um to some of your success man and the road that that you've traveled um because it's a great road and it's a lot of kids dream to be where you're at um but it's not exactly traditional or easy to do what you've done and what you've accomplished uh so far in uh in your career and and so why don't we just start off telling people a little bit about you uh where are you from uh and and what was your upbringing like Okay, so um, I grew up in Gibsonia slash Wexford area. Yeah, right um, here. Yep. It's your hood exactly right here. Exactly where we're at. Um, I went to Pine Ridge in high school. Uh, I was there from elementary school, middle school, all the way throughout the whole system. And, uh, I mean, my, my family, we're real close. And if I had to talk about my siblings or my, my dad and my mom, I wouldn't say anyone was very athletic or just naturally gifted, if I'm going to say that. Um I'd say we're just very hardworking people, and how I, many brothers and sisters? So two siblings. I'm the youngest of three. My, okay, my, you're the youngest yeah, of three. My, right. my brother's thirty. Okay, and uh, my sister's twenty-seven. All right. Yeah. And now, now in high school, what position did you play? So that's the funny part. When I was a senior in high school, I only weighed two hundred pounds. So okay. I played wide receiver and defensive end. Okay. I was always a physical football player, so that's why I played defensive end. And that wide receiver, I didn't get the ball much. I was kind of like that guy split out wide that would crack block and stuff for the slot yep. and i was just that physical enforcer love it love it so w when when you went to youngstown state you know after the transition from high school to to ysu what was that what was that like what was the transition like what was the climb like to 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 get on the field and be a starter you know it's easy to see you know the one play i'm referring to or or the one moment or 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 even just someone being a starter but i know a lot goes into that you know there, there's a lot of things that people don't see in the dark for years until these things come to light so what was it like to transition into youngstown state and, and just playing and and, uh, and being a penguin yeah so i'd say I, I definitely had the harder path um since i was a smaller kid coming out of high school my biggest i'd say slash offer was west virginia they were talking to me but they gave my scholarship to another uh player and at that point, I had a couple Division three, Division two um, offers, and, and in my mind, I knew um, I had I had the drive to play Division one football, and uh, I was talking to my dad, and he knew someone that had connection to Youngstown, so it was a week before signing day, and I went up there to visit on, on a Sunday, and they gave me a tour, and I was like, yeah, I I'm gonna commit. And I wasn't even on scholarship. I was actually a walk-on. Wow. Come so, on. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so I was a walk-on at Youngstown State. And my freshman year, I actually played defensive end. Um, I don't know if you know Avery Moss or Derek Rivers. They're now oh, playing yeah. in the NFL. Two studs, so two beasts. They the, were on that team with you. Yep. yep. Um, those are who I played defensive end with. 
And it's not until Bo Pelini came my sophomore year, and he switched me back to tight end. Um, and once that happened, um, I had a lot of support with a great tight end coach. And, I mean, it just took off from there. Love it. So when did you get your first start? Was it sophomore year, junior year? So sophomore year was a grind. Um, I'd played a lot of special teams. I'd probably get in, like, third down or – goal line package stuff like that kind of like yep. yeah prove and myself appreciating every moment yep. of it yeah um but yeah i didn't i didn't start really um until my junior year when we made that playoff run and even that year i wasn't a complete starter um jacob wood who many people from youngstown probably remember we were 88 um me and him were basically splitting starting time so every snap i got i had to make sure i uh did something on the field that it, people would remember it counted yep yeah so you know what what things do you think, you know, in that process have helped you uh, get to this point? You know, we're now, what is this, your second year in the NFL? Yep. So I came out of college, went to Green Bay, and then uh, I actually got let go. Saw you again. After the preseason. I was home that whole year, and uh, that was the year when the Steelers did not make the playoffs um, when they played the Bagels at home. After that Sunday, uh, they signed me that Wednesday. Um, and I've been there ever since. Nice. So this will be your second year with the Steelers? Yeah. Coming up? Nice. And and so what things do you think in that process, if anything, maybe nothing, but what, what things do you think in that process of, you know, going from defensive end to tight end and, you know, as a junior splitting time, have you gained from that experience or pulled from to get to this point? You know, not, not, not a lot of people are splitting time as a junior in in one double a football and then all of a sudden they're on an nfl roster for a few years you yeah know what for I mean? sure. so something happened um i'd say for me it's basically what happens when the doors are closed um everyone knows what people do when they see them in the spotlight but my entire career i would say is basically every single little thing i did monday all the way through the next sunday after practice before practice going there in early for films um just getting that extra work that I knew I needed I, um, because I knew I wasn't the most athletic, but I knew that if I did enough reps, uh, enough study, that I could overpass the guys in front of me. It's amazing. Ain't, ain't it crazy to, to, to look at the people that you came up with, you know, from peewees to high school to college? And it's not knocking anybody, but we got to keep it real for, for, for people because somebody may need to hear this to, to inspire them. But, but to me, it was crazy to see how much further even my career went, you know, in, in college, playing Division II football at Mercyhurst, four-year starter, captain. It, but I watched people that I grew up with and that I played with that were like phenoms in, in mm -hmm. their, their, their athletic ability, their size, everything was better than me. And when you look at the career and how everything played out, it was, it was, it was mind-blowing to see – where I would end up and where those people would end up because I thought those people would have been playing at Ohio State or Michigan or Florida and, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, to, to see, you know, where you've come from, you know, saying, you know, maybe I wasn't the fastest or I wasn't the best athlete. So I figure I had to probably a lot of people you saw that were that that had maybe some more speed or some more. They came in full scholarship, you know, four star recruit, you know, D1 transfer, you know, every, and they don't make it as far. You know what I mean? Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that crazy? And what do you think kids or, or, or people that are pursuing a dream, whether it's a young man and playing football right now or somebody pursuing a dream in anything? You know, because I think my only experience coming into business was, you know, other than, than and I'm going to just be real, other, other than me being – in the streets as a kid growing up my only other real experience that i think helped me in business was just playing sports but playing football specifically and, and doing it small with the same type of walk-on mentality chip on my shoulder and i think it all translates it's like the game of life mm -hmm. you know what i mean football has a lot of similarities to you know what what you're going to need to do in life what things do you think people can pull from all of that that we're talking about here that you don't need to be, you know, the most talented and there's a way to grind through that. What things do you think people can do, whether it's in business or in, or in football to get an edge if they don't have those things? 
Yeah, so basically, it doesn't matter if you're playing football, if you're in marketing, if you're an accountant. It, it doesn't matter. Um, it all comes down to your work ethic, in my opinion. Um, I've seen the most athletic people in the world that just don't have the drive. Um, and in my, in my personal opinion, the guys that do get the bigger Division One offers, like Ohio State, LSU, Alabama, um, don't get me wrong, there are very athletic, gifted people out there. I'm not knocking on any of them. But most of the time they're fully developed in ninth 10th grade they're fully grown into their bodies so these um big programs want them early and i was the opposite of that i was a late bloomer which there's a lot of kids like that and um that's when I, that's when you're you're playing especially when i was at youngstown and we'd play bigger teams like i mean, went to pittsburgh and there are guys on the team saying oh, oh we're gonna lose or I don't want to play them. And I remember we had an opportunity to play Ohio State before they made a role that we couldn't play the Big Ten. And I was upset about that because I would love to play Ohio State. Um, and it, it all comes back to the work ethic. It really does. Because at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't matter. If, if you're going to go harder, if you know more about the game, or just in life, if we're talking about people in the um, average working class, I mean, you can overpass anyone. It just all comes down to how bad you want it and what you're willing to do to get there. It's crazy mm -hmm. what, what what you can create in this world if you're willing to sacrifice, get there a little bit earlier than everybody else, stay a little bit later than everybody else, study a little bit longer than everybody else, work out a little bit. You know, even even you know, as we were walking up here, I was telling you I was with Ryan Shazier earlier today, and and uh, what was what was I, I got so excited because this is what I represent. I mean the the grind cast and and if you talk to anybody that has ever known me from a kid till now i don't think anybody's ever played a sport with me you can't find one that would say i wasn't out there grinding representing what what the label is i mean i that that's what i wrap my whole self around mm -hmm. i wasn't even supposed to be in a situation i was in and so i just lo like when he told me that i wanted to just like ah i couldn't wait to see you you know what i mean to tell you like man that's the shit that people got to be doing. That's the stuff that you can control. You know, I remember I spoke recently to a group of kids in, in college and, and they were saying uh, all this stuff, picking my brain after I talked. And, and I said, look, tell me who is, who's the top three hardest working people on your team. And when they named it, it wasn't them. And I said, that's the first thing you got to change is, is that's a controllable is if you ain't the hardest working person in that gym, especially if you're trying to make it, you already beaten yourself because you can almost create in this world. You can control in this world a lot of the things in your outcomes if you're willing to put in that work. So, you know, f let's talk about the the game that I was talking about when I'm jumping up and down on on the couch and uh, it's a semifinal game, I believe. You mm -hmm. know, but the game before the national championship game. Yeah, if we won that game, we go to the national championship. Yep, and and I think it was was it third down, fourth down. When, there were, when you there caught was, that there pass? were four seconds left on the clock. Four that. seconds left on the, yeah, on the so clock. Was the so that was it. Either way, this is the last play. <laughs> yeah. so, so there was four seconds left on the clock, and this is the last play of the game. And walk me through what that was like. You know, just seeing the ball coming your way. You know, the feeling of, you know, did I catch it? Did it count? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and, and the emotion of walk me through all of that. So me making that play, that in my opinion, that has nothing to do in that moment. That's what I did the two weeks prior to that game. Um, I ran that play, I want to say, six or seven times in practice. I got the opportunity to practice it. And there were other plays in that game leading up to it that I knew we were going to run. So I had a feeling it was going to come up. That it was going to come up uh, towards the end of the game. And it was a three-by-one set. So it basically put me on the backside, one-on-one -on -one with a corner. And basically how it happened in the game is not how we drew it up. Um, the corner didn't cover me. It was a linebacker. So right off the bat, I did not think I was going to get the ball. And I ran it the same way just so the quarterback had the trust in me that I was going to be where he wanted me to be. And I look back, and the ball's already there. So that's not normally the way that we draw it up. But it's basically he – that linebacker, he was actually uh, Cooper Cup's uh, brother at the time. And uh, – he played it perfect. He was inside of me, um, and the only way I could catch that ball is how you saw it get caught. Um, I didn't have my left hand available, and I basically just grabbed out with my right hand and just pinned it to him. 
pinned it, it to his body. Yeah, they, it was on his back left shoulder. One hand yep. pinned it to his back left shoulder, and you hit the ground. Mm-hmm. And and what happened there? I mean, how, did did you know it counted? Did, you know, so, what was the feeling? What did you see first? What the hell happened? So that emotionally. Was the, so when I caught the ball, I knew that I could not let go of it because that was the last play of the game. I knew that going in. And I basically took my left hand over top of his neck and like squeezed the heck out of him. And when I hit the ground, the ball didn't move. We, we rolled over. I, the ball still didn't move. <laughs> and at that point, two or three of his buddies came and started tearing at it. And that's when you see the pile and every, all the refs are coming in. And they, I didn't let go of it basically until you see they're patting me on the back saying touchdown, touchdown, touchdown because I did not want there to be any chance of a reversal because I knew they were going to replay it. Um, so, yeah, I basically didn't let go until they ba- made me let go. Game over. Yeah. Game over. We go to the national championship mm-hmm. game. I mean, I mean, that's something that you'll take with you and, and show your kids one day. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That, that's that's something that, that's so rare. It was on ESPN. Yeah, it was, you know, a, I it was think a top player. Too. Awesome, man. And and so you even look at that and you're thinking, you know, it was it was the weeks prior to that. It was probably even years prior to that mm-hmm. of, of, you know, who knows what, what amount of work or work ethic you put in to have the strength and mm-hmm. the coordination to pin that ball on the way down, thinking about not letting the ball move, you know, all this going on, how many reps that, that, that maybe other people would have skipped out on, you know, maybe was it a, sh- a couple shoulder days that you didn't <laughs> skip out on, or you know what I mean? It's like, who knows what ounce, mm-hmm. Because that's every ounce of you. Well, the, well, the big thing like is uh, my tight end coach, he always told us, when your number's called, make the play. Because us as a tight end, you don't get many opportunities. And if you drop the ball, that quarterback's probably not going to come back to you. Yep. So every chance I get throughout college, even now, I make sure I make that play. Because you don't know when you're not going to have that opportunity anymore. Walk on to a couple years in the NFL now. There's a lot of people that go big time D1 and – Less than 1% of these people are, are in the NFL for a year, two years. What things, and I, I know we've grabbed a lot of this already, but just what things do you think separated you somehow to out of all these players, all these people, all these big-time schools, you now make it, and I bet you there's a laundry list of, of, of superstar athletes that were not walk-ons. Uh, that started as freshmen, you know, mm. at Alabama, and they didn't get a chance. You know, they, they or they didn't make it. What what things do you think separated you a little bit from the others to to put you to where where you're at right now? So it's kind of cliche, kind of um, people kind of over overthink it sometimes. But in my opinion, it's effort, and I've I've actually been quoted on that throughout my college career. And because you you don't know what play in a football game is going to make the difference, you just don't know. Um, if it, if you take one step, if you if you take a play off, someone could pick intercept the ball and they could score. You got to be that guy to tackle them. Um, and Ray Lewis, I I love watching his motivational stuff because he's one of the best speakers and one of the best linebackers to ever play the game. Yep. And he always says your effort is judged between yourself. No one else can judge it. It's between you and you. And if you take that play off, you don't know what's going to happen. So, I mean, that, that's one thing I take pride in. If I'm on special teams, if I'm on offense, or There's no be, plays beginning off. of my career Just on defense, it, max it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I'm going full speed 100% of the time. Love it. How about anything in the off season? You know, anything you think that, that you've done differently, you know, in the off season that not everybody does from an effort standpoint? I think it's just a routine. Um, there's obviously a lot of distractions out there. Um, if you live in the city, which I do, and uh, I mean, sometimes you got close friends, you got uh, um, family. I mean, people that want you to do things. Sometimes yeah. you gotta say no. Especially you're local. Yeah, I mean, there's a so lot. Not of Not only everything else that would normally that would bring, but now you got, mm-hmm. you know, you got people. You're from here. Yep. You know, too. So. So there's a lot of people that um, hit me up on the regular that I grew up with, and sometimes I hate to do it, but I have to say no because. I have a strict routine that I do daily, and I, w- I wake up at the same time every day. It doesn't matter if I have, it's an off day or a work day because I know if I change it, that's affecting my diet. It's affecting oh. my sleep later in the day. And, I mean, with what I do day to day, my body is my job. So I have to stay pretty disciplined and strict on what I do. 
think that's critical. I think even in you know, I, in in not only sports but in business, show people that, that you'll see people that have a a big time chance or a shot, mm-hmm. especially if they're young, and they can't separate that. I want to party, you know. I want to have fun, you know what I mean? Because you could be thinking, man, I'm twenty. What are you? Twenty four? Yep. Twenty four years old. You know, I'm playing with the Steelers, and you know, I'm living in town, and you know. I only live once and I'm young and, you know, I could just, let's go out every day. You know, let's go to the South side, you know, let's have, you know, let's, 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 and, and I think that's where a lot of athletes start to lose it is, is, is they, they can't control that party, you know, mm-hmm. that, that if they want to party and that's how they start to lose it. And that's how people like you to walk on, start to gain those inches. And, and, and all of a sudden you give those people a chance. And by the time you realize what happened, it's too late because they've already developed themselves in the, in the hours that you were losing discipline. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, so one thing I've seen actually is if you're talking about big division one programs compared to walk ons or guys from smaller schools, you're seeing guys that are coming from smaller schools being drafted more often now, which didn't happen before. And the reason is, is those guys that are bigger programs, they ha- they're at a high level, and they're used to being at a high level. And when they're not given something or they're asked to do something different that they're not used to, sometimes they get defiant or they don't like that. And the guys that aren't given that and they never were given it are so hungry that they'll do whatever it takes to get Grateful there. Grateful for the opportunity. Yep. Grateful for the opportunity. I, I, I think – when you have that attitude of, of gratitude, I'm just grateful to, to be here. And so I get a chance to do this and, and you get obsessed with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the word for anyone that I've seen do anything real special is, is I think you need to be obsessed. You know, you, 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 sometimes it's a negative word, you know, people look at it as, but, but, you know, I don't, I think what you're describing to me is somebody that a lot of people would, would describe as obsessed. You know, I got to wake up no matter what I got to wake up at, th- at this time. Like that's crazy to a lot of people. Oh yeah. It's not crazy to me. Yeah. I got up at two 30 this morning to work out. That's I awesome. was at the gym at three forty five because my day wouldn't have, would have went the right way if I couldn't get these things done before I was in Youngstown by seven o'clock before seven o'clock. Um, those things are, are the things that I think start to, to separate people. And I mm-hmm. think the obsession, you know, of uh, because if I don't do this, I got to I won't get enough sleep mm-hmm. or now I got to worry about my recovery or I won't get enough meals in. I, I, I won't get the like that's a freaking obsession, dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's not an average like ah, oh, we're just going to no, that's like someone that is meticulously obsessed with what the heck they're doing right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? How 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 would you describe, you know? what I'm talking about as far as obsessed, would you say that you, you need to be some form of, of, of obsessed to achieve certain levels of greatness? Uh, I'd say, I mean, people that, I mean, you look at people hall of fame, they always say you gotta have a little crazy in you because not everyone gets there. You gotta ha- set yourself apart to get to that level. And I mean, it, it's, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, people overthink it. I mean, it, it's very simple to do, and it's very hard to do at the same time because there are so many distractions. So many you things ha- pulling yeah, at you. Exactly. What, what tricks have you used, or what what advice or tips would you give to, to not everybody, but especially young people? You know, in their early twenties, have a chance to be successful, having all these distractions. What what advice would you give to someone on how, how do I quiet that stuff mm-hmm. and stay in my zone? Well, the one, the one thing I've noticed with young with younger kids and stuff is sometimes I think their goals are unachievable, which, I mean, I was one of them when I was very young. Um, I was actually an insecure kid that thought some things were out of reach um, until I understood and I talked to people that basically what we're talking right now that told me it is possible. Um, and basically what I'd say to them is if you want to do it, go do it. Anything is possible. All you got to do is put the work in. Um, it doesn't matter what you want to be. If you want to be in NASA, if you want to be the president, if, if you want to do it. If you're willing to put in the work. Exactly. Go, yep. go get it. No doubt. No doubt. So being with the, with the Steelers, I would have to assume, you know, growing up in Pittsburgh, that you were at some point maybe a, a Steelers fan. Did, did, you, did you like the Steelers growing up or was it a different squad? Were you a rebel? Oh, no. I mean, me, my brother, sister, my, my grandfather, everyone loves the Steelers. My brother actually... Growing up, wore a Franco Harris jersey every single day. So love it, yeah, love it. So you know that was me with the Penguins. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just I grew up on YSU, man, 
And uh, when I was coming up as a kid, they were winning everything. They were, we were dominating, winning national championships. What have you seen? You know, you were you you were briefly with the Packers, being with the Steelers. You know, you hear so much about how great of an organization it is. You know, it's success leaves clues. Winners win every year. You know, you look at just the 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 last ten years or twenty years. You just you'll see how many times did they win? How many times did they make the playoffs? How many times did they win a Super Bowl? You know, it's they're up there with one of those few franchises that got that ring and they got the most wins in Super Bowl history. So, mm -hmm. this is this is, you know, one of the organizations. Is there anything that you can see, you know, in that organization that you would be willing to share and and it's okay to to, to share that stands out on what's so special? about the, the Steelers? What's the sauce? I mean, there's a couple things. Um, you can look at their coaching and the, in the history, there's not been many. Um, they very, they invest in the guys they bring in that organization and they trust in them. Um, they can, invest yeah. into the people that they bring into the organization and they trust in them. Yep. Not a lot of turnover at the, at, at the head coaching position, mm -hmm. much like we were talking about with, with YSU. Yep. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Um, now, I'm going to bring up this past season that we just had. Because a lot of people think that we were going to do much worse than we did. And, I mean, if you look at what we were dealing with, injuries and people out, I mean. Oh, no doubt. Exactly. Um, and I'm going to go bring up Mike Tomlin right now. And his biggest quote, which I love, he says, the standard is the standard. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter if you're a Division three guy, Division one, if you were a walk-on in college, the top prospect coming out of the draft. If your number's called and the guy in front of you is hurt or unable to play, you have to perform the same exact level as, I mean, my position would be Vance McDonald. I mean, the other one people know would be Roethlisberger. He was out this year. Um, but, yeah, that's the standard. If you get your opportunity, you're expected throughout that organization to play at that high level. Love it. And Any differences, you know, that you see that stand out between Pittsburgh and, and uh, uh, YSU? Or, you know, how is that different? You know, other than you're going to class and, you know, mm -hmm. obviously one you're in college and one you're playing professionally. But, you know, anything other than the obvious, you know, that, that's different or is it a lot alike and very similar? I, I'd say yes on both regards and no. It, it's obviously the schedule is different. You got class and you got football all day. And now it's it's the job. So it's a different perspective. Um, everything is on you. So I'll give you an example. When I was in college, the weight training or stuff like that, the runs, they're all organized and it was mandatory. If you didn't do it, you were punished. You had to do extra cardio and stuff like that. Now you're not punished. If you don't do it, you don't do it and they don't care. Um, it's, it, it's very blunt and some people take offense to it in the, um, in the industry, but you're, you're a pro and you have to look at it that way. And um, it, you make your own decisions on and off the field. And basically what you do on and off the field determines if you're going to stay around. Because a lot of guys get pushed out the league. The average is around two or three years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people know that. Yep, three um, years, I think. Yeah. And it's very hard. When you hear about guys retiring eight, nine years in the NFL, it's a very <laughs> impressive thing to do. Right. And especially right, that's if, some if you're the same right organization. There. Eight, eight, nine years, man. <laughs> you, you, you ran the gauntlet. Different yep. level of, of respect to make it that that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys have a full another level of knowledge and expertise on what they do every single year. Why do you think those people make it? Because even, I, I got friends, you know, my neighbors, I got friends that have that have played uh, in the NFL that I'm close to. And, and, and uh, they got eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. And even the schools that that the ones I'm thinking of where they came from, you know, not perennial powerhouses, you know, one of them. Mm. Uh, one's Wisconsin, the other one's Minnesota. Two, two D one schools, uh, but just don't run. They, they, you know, when you look at when they were drafted, you know all that. Just it's not somebody you probably would have bet on over a lot of other people making it eight nine years. What do you think those people maybe had other than skill set? Mm. You know, what do you think those people have that people that don't make it? You know, average three years. You know, in the in the NFL, anything stand out? Yeah, so obviously you hear about the superstars in the league, and I mean, there's a lot of special teams guys that play 89 years in, in the NFL, a lot of people don't know about. Um, and then the biggest thing is there are 
I mean, I don't know how many colleges are in the United States and stuff like that, but think about how many college football players come on every single year. Tons. So you're not just competing with your team. You're not just competing with other teams. You're competing with every single guy coming out of college football. And it's basically your hunger, and, and you have to stay on a constant increase of getting better and better and better because if you don't, you're going to get passed up. And the big thing is the longer you are there, the more expensive you are. Your contract gets gets bigger and bigger. And the younger guys so now are, you got to either bring in that much value. Yep. And if it's a if it's a wash, mm-hmm. I'm going with the guy that's cheaper. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah, that's exactly the way I look at it. What's your what's your what's your you know you hear I, just, I even hate using this term because you hear it so often now. It's so cliche. Like I stayed away from the whole motto of 2020 vision this year because I knew everybody was going to be using it, but. You know what's your why? You know you hear people say that all the time. What's what's your why? You know what's your what's your reason? What's your motivation? Uh, you know anything driving you? You know, but but behind this effort and work ethic, you know, do you have a, a specific why or or um, also is there a place that you go when you need motivation? Is there a, a, any mental tricks or habits that you have when you feel like you need a little extra juice that you go to? Yeah, so for me, there's actually a few. Um, obviously, it's my family. I mean, I at some point, I do want to give back to them. Um, I made my mom a promise I want to buy her a car at some point in my career, and I, I very much want to do that. Um, beyond that, it's me with my goals in the game. I mean, it's I want to constantly get better. And once I lose that drive, I'm probably not going to play anymore. That's how much I love playing football. And you have to at this level. And, and, and any people that are successful, they're going to have the same story no matter what field they're in. Right. Um, Success leaves clues. Yep. Yep. Um, and, I mean. <laughs> any mental, mental motivation stuff when, when you're down or when you need a jolt? Yeah. So, me personally, I brought up the Ray Lewis thing. I, I watch videos. And anytime I'm with those guys, I ask questions. Kind of like you were saying you were speaking. The guys are picking your head about things like that. Um I've talked to so guys. You're attentive, always yep. asking questions. When you get in the room with, with some of these people, you're asking them questions and, and, and being attentive. Mm-hmm. You're going and looking up YouTube of, of Ray Lewis. Is that what you're saying? You're, you're going to find I have before, mo- yes. motivation. Okay. <laughs> um, but me personally, when I got in the NFL, my two guys in uh, my room at the time were Jimmy Graham and Mercedes Lewis, and also uh, Lance Kendricks. Um, all have nine plus years at that time in the NFL. So I had some knowledge in the room. Yep. Um, was that a, a Green Bay? Yeah. Okay. So I went there, and then they signed. That Lance was there, and then they signed Jimmy and Mercedes. Okay. Um, so the competition was steep at that point in that room. Um, but the one thing I learned is take care of your body. That was number one. If you're not available, you're not going to stay there. Yep. The biggest thing is availability. And the other thing is your drive. You got to be hungry, like I'm saying, 24-7. And – the one thing Mercedes Lewis was talking to me about is because he's now 14, I think 14 plus in the NFL years. And when he hit year nine, he, he changed the way he was training. He went to more mixed martial arts. and Oh, um, yeah, you were telling me about yep. this guy. And uh, it, it increased his speed and everything like that off the field. And when he went on the field, his, his senses and twi- fast twitch muscles were off the roof. And that's something I've actually been incorporating into my training. I've uh, been picking on boxing and stuff like that. Beautiful. Yeah. Coaches. You know, a- any influential, you know, coaches, people, you know, I'm sure there's been a lot, but any couple coaches stand out, you know, that that played a big part in your life, influence in your life, and what did you get from those people? So there are two, and uh, they were actually on the staff that we made the run with and at Youngstown my junior year. It would be uh, Bo Pelini and then uh, Joe Gans. Joe Gans was my tight end coach. Um, he changed the whole perspective on how I prepared for the game. He was he actually played quarterback at Nebraska, and he taught me through a quarterback's mindset of how looking at the field, how every time you line up, you got to have a plan. You're reading the triangle of the corner, linebacker, and safety, and rotation. Well, he helped you a lot with like the that. F- football IQ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He shot my football IQ through the roof, and that's okay. one thing that has, in my opinion, helped me read the field as I'm playing football. Um, and then Bo Pelini, he, he, he's a very, very good coach. And the thing, he, he basically has the same thing as Mike Tomlin. It's the standards, the standard. It doesn't matter who you are. He doesn't care. 
and some coaches do. They they they, they like the the big name guys and stuff like that. But um, as long as you get the job done, it doesn't matter. And he was always about work ethic and um, are you staying after? Are you there early? What are you What are you doing when we're not in the building watching you? That's yep. what he was talking about. Yep. And that's something that I do every single day. Staying after. Yep. And, and, and they're I, early. Yep. That applies to everything. Mm-hmm. If I if I'm doing a workout and I'm tired. I mean, everyone has those days they don't feel like doing it. No I, I have them also. No doubt. And uh, I make sure I try to do one or two things that help me every single day that like boost myself to make me better tomorrow or next year or, or something like that. Yep. What 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 is your daily, you know, habits or or routine that you think keeps you on on track? You mentioned you know, I get up at a certain time, I go to bed at a certain time for the most part. Kind of what what's that routine looking like? So it, you. It, it depends on the time of the year. Right now we're in the off season, so uh, everything's voluntary. Um, all the workouts are up to you. And for, for me, uh, I'm getting up around 7 a.m. right now, it, which will be earlier when it comes season time. But um, I'm working out from, I'd say, roughly 8.30 until 1 p.m. Now, that's not just a lift. That's, that's doing different things. I'm doing a, a – Five hours. Yeah, full lift. I'm watching film. I'm doing core. I'm doing mobility. I'm. Uh, they, we actually have a light board in our facility that it trains your fast switch reaction time. So when I when I see that football, I can react faster and make catches like the one we were talking about earlier. Yep. Um, yeah. There's just little things like that that helps me separate because I know there's going to be more and more competition every year that I'm I'm in this uh, industry. No doubt about it. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm excited for for you man i'm excited for you you're somebody that you know you you want to see do well you root for that person that was a a a walk-on and and now they're playing in their hometown and they're putting in they got to do everything extra and and all of that Mm -hmm. stuff so you know first of all congratulations to to you and how far that you've come um you know but at the same time we got to stay stay hungry and not you know pat ourselves on the back for that stuff um to where you you lose that hunger mm. you know what i mean so yeah, for sure um closing out any any final thoughts or pieces of advice you know for somebody that is maybe in an industry or in a sport where they're a little undersized or maybe not the most talented uh any inspiration, motivation, words of wisdom, words of advice on on how to go in their life from walk on to NFL. I'm going to bring up the grind, like you were saying, um, which you talk about all the time. And uh, people get told this all the time that they can't do things. I was one of them as a kid. And my, well, basically, what I want to say is, don't let someone tell you that. I, I mean, you can walk away or say something back. It's up to you. But if someone tells me personally, I can't do something. I go nuts in the head, and I am going to do whatever I can to prove them wrong. And I would just say, do whatever you can, and it doesn't matter. Like you were saying, the whatever industry, job, that will make you better, and that will help you reach your goals and achievements in life. Amen. Amen. Well, congrats, man. And, and uh, Kevin, h- how would, would anybody, you know, is there any uh, – follow you know if they wanted to follow you you know some of our listeners wanted to learn a little bit more about you um you know because not everybody knows your name yet yet Mm -hmm. so how how would they get a hold of you how would they find you on social media or or, uh any other outlets yeah so my social media is k raider 83 um that's the same with my twitter you can follow me on either one of those and i'm trying to very be very interactive with fans that want to follow me or have questions or things like we're talking about now um and i've been trying to get back to those people and as much as i can and help them out in any way i can awesome man awesome well congrats on your success and and uh good skills not good luck on the uh, on your continued pursuit of greatness uh here in pittsburgh brother thanks for coming on uh, on the grindcast thanks for joining us on another episode of the grindcast get ready it's a new day count money man money stack man. riches trying to told, told him i'm a beast blood.